Hi everyone, this is Yael with Nurturing Resilience and I got a request to look at uh, how we might alleviate sciatica. <laughs> I guess that this is related to resilience because if you've got a pain in your butt, it's hard for you to be engaged in the world. And sciatica is sort of non-medically defined as any pain in the low back or, or in the sacrum area or in the bum that goes down almost always one leg at a time, usually through the back of the leg, occasionally through the side of the leg. Uh, the sciatic nerve is the longest and thickest nerve in the body. It's about as thick as one of your fingers. Uh, starts, th there's actually five different nerve roots that we talk about when we're talking about sciatica, but um, generally speaking, it goes through right the fleshiest part of your bottom. And if obviously you're having an acute sciatic attack, then I would say rest and anti-inflammatories. Um, but if it's chronic, then it's really, really helpful to start to look at what you can strengthen and stabilize, and then also uh, stretching things out. But we're gonna strengthen and stabilize first. Couple of different schools of thought. There's one school of thought that says, anytime you have any issues in your spine or in your back, you wanna give all the muscles that support your spine the most support as it can, and, and even build to an athletic level your ab muscles, your obliques, right? Your What we think of as your core muscles, as well as in the low back, as well as your hips and your glutes. Um, another school of thought, uh, Mukunda Stiles, who created structural yoga therapy, taught that particularly in the case of chronic pain, uh, like sciatica can, can become, you want to strengthen the muscles below the the source of pain so that that pain can uh, really uh, let go if you will so we're going to do a little bit of each <laughs> today and what you'll need is a ball of any kind like could be a tennis ball this is silica but a tennis size ball if you're hardcore a lacrosse ball and then optional you don't need a band but i just I happen, I, I always have one of these with me. I got it in PT. I also have like sciatica and herniated discs. I've suffered with that. I don't get it anymore, luckily. But any kind of band that sort of helps you move a little bit. And you probably won't need this if you're uh, in a lot of pain right now. So it's totally optional. Okay. And then we're, I'm just gonna show you some movements. We're gonna do five. So the first one, there's three different ways that you could set yourself up. We're gonna work first on strengthening the hamstrings, which are these large muscles, right, in the back of your thighs underneath the source of the pain. And option number one, lie prone. I like to make a pillow out of my hands, take my chin, but you could do forehead as well. I'm going to rock my hips from side to side. And then I'm just going to press down through the tops of my feet and then lift my right leg up on the inhale and down on the exhale. And I'm not lifting so high up that I'm tipping over. This is what not to do. So, you know, you just might find yourself lifting up a couple of inches from the floor and down. And if you're not sure if you're getting it, reach back, touch yourself. You want to make sure that your glutes are activated and your hamstrings. So that's option number one. And of course you would do this on both sides. I'm just doing about five lifts. Um, but I would say 10, maybe work yourself up to 10 or even three sets of 10 maybe even four, <laughs> depends, on, uh, depends on how you're feeling. Option number two, same thing, but we're gonna be in a tabletop. And by the way, in tabletop, if it suits you to have a little bit more lift 
or softness under those wrists. You could use blocks. You can also come down onto your forearms. And it's the same idea. I'm just gonna start with the other leg here. I'm gonna flex my foot and I'm gonna keep that foot and leg pointing down. And I'm just gonna lift and lower, inhaling and exhaling. Now, because when I'm doing this, my belly is hovering over the ground, I also will have to work a little bit harder to neutralize through this part of my torso, right? So that I'm not totally sinking in. So this adds, I just wanna show you on the other side, a little bit more of muscular activation. I wanna make sure that I'm not opening up the hip, that everything is staying Nice and steady. My, these blocks are my friends and they're a little thinner than I'm used to. It's just up and down, strengthening that. The third way that you could do this is using a chair or a bookshelf. So I'm just going to use a chair and I just want to make sure that I have enough room behind me. You could do a kitchen counter, it could be really nice too. And I'll just start in sort of a down dog, which also will help to relieve some back pain. And by the way, you could really bend your legs as much as feels good. And then I'm just gonna lift and lower. Just noticing the angle. So just lift and lower. You don't have to be all the way down to do this because remember we're really working on the hamstrings. So lifting and lowering. So you might find that you want to do all of those, like maybe you want to do the one that's down on the ground, which is uh, in yoga called locust or half locust because we're just lifting up through the legs first thing in the morning while you're still in bed. And then as your coffee or tea is brewing, <laughs> You do this by the kitchen counter just to strengthen through those hamstrings. Okay, then the second exercise that we're gonna do, and again, this is one that you could do in tabletop or standing. So something that I've been doing a lot with my classes is very slow hip circles. And so we do that by stabilizing through the core, and you wanna go slower than you think you need to. And you'll feel that this really activates all those muscles at the front side and back of the pelvis, which is actually where we need this. So I just did, I think, five in one direction, and I could really feel and I'm, I'm doing it in the opposite direction now. I can really feel all those muscles juicing up. So I'm demonstrating this on the right leg on the ground. But if you prefer to do it standing up, then you can also easily do it standing up. And to do that, I would just hold on to something or do it freestyle as you want. And we're just gonna draw those same circles out to the side and down. Now you may be touching down. You could also use this as an opportunity to balance. I'm still stabilizing, so I'm not moving a ton, right? I'm just really trying to build strength in the areas where Let's face it, especially with all the sitting that we do, our bodies are no longer so strong. And I'm gonna go around in the other direction. My breath is nice and smooth. That might be aspirational. <laughs> and then I could shake this out whether I've been standing or sitting, leg circles. Okay, so now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna maybe use the band 
or not. I'm going to come to standing. If you've got the band, just go ahead and place it around your ankles. You might be holding on to anything that you want. And we're going to, um, let's say I'll have this left leg as my standing leg. And I'm just going to go to the side as much as I can and then to the back. To the side and to the back. And so this is also working my balance, but you can feel that you're working these side muscles and these back muscles. Good. And by the way, maybe you don't need the band at all and you just want to go really slow to the side, really slow to the back. Very similar to what we just did, right? Working these muscles here, lateral hips, medial glutes. Awesome. And you could feel free to shake that out. Maybe you want to do 10 of those each. Okay, the next exercise that we're going to do is we're going to start to get into stretching. So one of the um, well, most well-known stretches is called the sciatic stretch. <laughs> you might want a little stool or some blocks in front of you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lean back on a bookshelf because <laughs> that's what I have in this room. I'm going to cross my right foot in front of my left. I'm gonna lean forward. My bum can be on the wall. And I'm just gonna come down to the extent that feels good. Maybe I'm gonna use my blocks here to support my hand or stool. One thing I very much like doing here as well is sort of playing with taking the stretch to one side, taking some breaths. And then to the other side. Coming back through center. Letting yourself be as like loosey goosey as feels good. And then coming on up. Whew. Uncross and we'll get to the other side. So now left foot in front of right, mindfully come on down just to the extent that feels good maybe using books or blocks to bring the ground a little bit closer to you you could also wag your tail here if you're not quite leaning into the wall or you could walk your hands over and where you feel a lot of sensation as long as it's not so much that it's causing your breath to get raspy or jagged let yourself stay there. So where there's like a little bit of sensation, but no anxiety, because we want to be able to stay calm, including in the face of soreness and pain. Otherwise we're adding a lot of suffering on top of pain. <laughs> suffering on top of suffering. So you explore what feels possible for you. And then maybe after 20, 30 seconds, come on up. You uncross. Awesome. Sciatic stretch. Okay. So the next stretch we're going to do is probably really familiar if you've ever done yoga. It's sort of like a pigeon stretch. Uh, typically in a regular yoga class you would tuck your right leg forward and you would lie down. That's a lot of weight on both the knee and the labrum of the hip. So I'm not, there's a few other ways you can do this which is quite nice. 
If you've got a wall back behind you, you could just lean back, cross your left, your right ankle over your left, and then you might already, as I am, feel uh, the stretch by the right hip. You can also just keep scooching this left foot closer to the left bum until you're getting a good sensation here. And so I'm just gonna hang out here for some deep breaths. You could actually hold this pose for three to five minutes at a time if, it, if that is sustainable for you. Also moving my jaw around. Trying to relax everything as I feel the epicenter of the stretch. I can feel it a little bit in the inner thigh as well as that outer hip. And I'm just gonna try to relax everything else. Okay, so this is one great way of doing uh, pigeon pose. Another one which my husband loves, he's six foot two, is standing. And again, I'm gonna I'm gonna use this chair, uh, which I have previously tested and is the perfect height for me. <laughs> and what I'm gonna do, I'll just do it on the other side, is now I'm gonna take my my left ankle just on top of that chair so I'm in external rotation with the hip and I'm just going to let myself hang out here. Isometrically I might be pressing that left knee down towards the ground. I could make this a balancing pose or a little back bend too. So it's fun to play with um, shapes but also functions of the pose and sometimes you find like they're completely different on the ground hovering off the ground or close to the ground and then standing up and sometimes one pose doesn't quite work for our bodies but another one works beautifully and so again i could hold this for three minutes or just one more big breath All right, and then I'm gonna come on out of it. By the way, if it feels good for you, in my classes, we often will either shake out or do little hip circles. You are welcome to do that for as long as feels good. Okay, and then the final thing we're gonna do I guess this is sort of like the six. So we did five stuff. Then we're gonna do a little bit of ball work. And this is not for the faint of heart. So we're gonna, the first place we're gonna work on are these side hips. So one possibility, if this is really a tense part for you, if you're super sensitive, is just to take that ball with your hand, find the sides of the hips, Kind of like also the upper IT band, iliotibial band, and you could just do some circles. So that's option number one. We're going to do um, a couple of points here. Option number two, which is a little bit more intense, is to lean onto one side. I'm on the right. I'm going to lift myself up and I'm going to place the tennis ball right in that spot. And then I'm going to roll around. So I'm leaning most into my right forearm and this left foot, which I have bent back behind me. And I could really find some sore spots or oh, I found a good one. And so I'm just going to hang out right here. When you find a good spot, just feel free to stay for however long. Usually what starts to happen is that your muscles will eventually, at first, they'll kind of resist that ball because the ball is causing some pain. But the longer you hang out, 
the fascia all around those tight muscles is starting to release. Not just around the muscles, but also uh, by the ligaments, by the tendons, by the joints themselves. That could take a minute, that could take three minutes. Okay, and then we're gonna come on off of that. We're gonna roll onto our backs. I'm gonna uh, keep this left knee bent because that's how I like to do it. And I'm gonna take the tennis ball right to where that sciatic nerve is. So it's about the fleshiest part of your bottom. You might prefer to do this with both knees bent or both legs straight. And I'm going to first rock the ball, let me show you, from side to side. So I'm going on that flushiest part from the tailbone out to the outer hip. And as you keep rocking there, somewhere along that horizontal plane, you are going to find a point where there's gripping or tension. I, I always like to say a point that's tender but not traumatic. <laughs> and then you're just gonna hang out. When you find that like point that feels like, oh my God, this is never gonna let go or this is it, this must be the source of my pain, stop there. You can either have your hands on the body or off Feel free to close the eyes. And then take a few breaths. And again, um, I would maybe hold this for at least a minute, could be five. We just, I don't want this video to go on for three hours. <laughs> and then what I might do is find a second point a little bit above, a little bit below, a little to the right, a little to the left. And then I'll, I'll find another point again with, with tenderness and I'll hang out. And in fact, um, you could keep doing this. Like maybe you just want to roll around on balls before you go to bed. A lot of us with sciatic pain will find that we can't sleep. And so this is a really, really lovely way of releasing the myofascial tissue around that thick, juicy nerve enough so that it'll calm down. And when you feel like the sensation has calmed down for you, you could remove the ball, could stretch out both legs if that's okay for the low back. And you might just pause here for a moment and notice the difference now between sides. And of course you would do the exact same thing on the other side. So hitting the side of the hip, as well as right where that sciatic nerve, taking a minute in that point and a minute once you feel like the fascia releasing right around the sciatic nerve, then you might follow a pathway above or below to the right or to the left. So I hope you enjoyed this. I'm gonna write down the exercises um, so that it's easier in the description, so that it's easier for you to follow along. Thank you so much.